The opinions and viewpoints expressed in .NET Rocks are not necessarily those of its sponsors or of Microsoft Corporation, its partners, or employees. .NET Rocks is a production of Franklin's Net, which is solely responsible for its content. Franklin's Net, training developers to work smarter. Rockheads, stop drinking the Tech Ed Kool-Aid and listen up. It's time for another stellar episode of .NET Rocks, the internet audio talk show for .NET developers with Carl Franklin and Richard Campbell. This is Jeff Maciolik, here to announce show number 107 with guests Rory Blythe and Scott Hanselman, recorded live Friday, April 1st, 2005. .NET Rocks is brought to you by Franklin's Net. Training developers to work smarter and now offering hands on VBNet and ASPNet classes remotely. Online at www.franklins.net. And by Data Dynamics, makers of ActiveReports.net. Simple, powerful, and cost effective reporting for Windows Forms and ASPNet web applications. Online at www.datadynamics.com. Support is also provided by Code Magazine, the leading independent magazine for .NET developers, online at www.code-magazine.com. Support is also provided by PeterBloom.com. Start with better controls, finish with better sites. P-E-T-E-R-B-L-U-M.com. And now, the man who really has no idea what to expect for the next hour, Carl Franklin. Without any pain, gotta get enough points. Classic ASP, word perfect, shift F7. <laughs> hey, this is Carl. Welcome to .NET Rocks, your audio talk show for .NET developers. Uh, a special uh, almost reunion and wacky show that I have no idea, as Jeff said, what's, what's going to happen. But I am here in New London, Connecticut. It is Friday, April 1st uh, as we record this. And my counterpart out there in British Columbia, in Vancouver, British Columbia, that is, is Richard Campbell. How are you, man? Oh, well, I'm finally feeling better. You yes. Know? You heard me earlier in the week. You were hugging. My punishment the- for flying five hours twice in uh, 48 hours was uh, getting a nasty flu. You sounded horrible, yeah. man. Were you hugging the porcelain? Uh, no, it wasn't that bad. It was mostly just goo emanating from, uh, from the, the head in all directions. Ugh. And, of course, the family being away, I got to take care of myself the whole time. So, so much for my break. <laughs> but I did manage to get out uh, on Wednesday. Went and saw uh, Barry Gervin uh, did this talk in Vancouver. He's a fellow Canadian RD. Mm-hmm. He did this uh, architect's breakfast downtown Vancouver. So cool. we had a chance to uh, to visit there, and and uh, I took lots of drugs and got up early to go see what he was up to. It was an interesting talk. We were talking about uh, modeling uh, the architecture of applications is you know similar to uh, modeling software and uh, using design patterns around it. I like I like Barry. He's uh, he taught me what the word "tack" means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a very naughty word, it there, is. Carl. <laughs> the French Canadian folks are going to get offended. That's why I like saying it because it I has no meaning did. to me. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to you at all. Yeah. So what the heck? Uh, anyway, we did get some mail this week from um, uh, who is this from? Jim is his name. Uh, Jim McCusker, and he says, Hey, Carl, just finished listening to this week's show, and I couldn't agree with you more about the overall confusion about web services, SOA, and to overall confusion over its usage. While I don't agree with the comments regarding developing a new language for SOA, I do believe Microsoft's work with Indigo and WSI compliance is going to make web services much easier to implement in the future for all of us. One key thing you guys all seem to miss in your discussion about SOA was interoperability. My organization has a mixture of Wintel, Linux, and Unix variants that are generally stovepipes of functionality that don't generally communicate between each other. Some of our first-generation web services were developed under BEA, but there were many problems interfacing to their interfaces unless you were using BEA's Java wrappers. With the advent of WSI standards and Microsoft's adoption of these standards with WSE and Indigo, 
I'm very hopeful that the future benefit of SOA will be in truly interoperable services that work between platforms. Only time will tell, but I'm seeing good examples of such interoperability already. Perhaps the Java and .NET camps can finally start to get along. Great show as usual. Keep up the good work on DNR, and I'm looking forward to next week's show. Jim. Yeah, Richard, that's a really good point. We we didn't talk about yeah, interoperability. We didn't talk about interoperability at all. And funny, oddly enough, I had just finished doing talks about interoperability using web services too. Yeah. So we were right there. And you know, my reaction when he says maybe they'll finally get along, my my automatic reaction is don't bet we'll on it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, don't bet on it. You, you know, WSC is great, and 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 it is a, a, applying to the standards, but because this stuff's shifting so quickly, and new versions are coming all the time, and Microsoft is. In Microsoft's usual way, just like every other vendor, so not just Microsoft doing this, th- when they put together a bundle of uh, web services implementations, they they add some of their own stuff as well. And so it's fairly tough to interop. Doesn't just happen. It's not that simple. You've got to uh, to work at it. But it can be done. And uh, the demonstrations we did definitely showed it work. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, I was listening again to the show, and you know, there was a point at which you know Rocky was basically being ultra ultra sarcastic about. Uh, yes. services so and so sarcastic even we didn't get we it. didn't get it at first and you know he was he basically said objects are done i'm done with the object services is the way it goes and what he's basically reacting to is people who say you know who say just that who yeah. say that you know objects are dead services are the way to go as if the soa architecture is a one size fits all stop you know a one stop shop for every architecture uh, issue and that's exactly what my point was. Uh, in his point was are the same. He just I said it more blatantly. He was a little more sarcastic about it, but which is odd for him, don't you think? Yeah, no, it was very very strange. You know, Rocky's a pretty straight up guy, yeah. and uh, it takes that's why he he sneaks it past. I think it's was sitting <laughs> he was sitting too close to Bill. Vaughn. I think that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little Vaughn radiation there. <laughs> just generates sarcasm everywhere you go. <laughs> well, anyway, it was a great show. And, uh, well, this is going to be fun because this is like uh, old home week here. Uh, Rory Blythe is out there at an airport somewhere, and Scott Hanselman is at, is at his home and, and uh, talking. How are you guys? <laughs> oh, we're allowed to talk? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was on the phone just with Brian Cumble just then. Ah, okay. He, he let me on his show a little earlier. <laughs> How are you, I didn't want to come in and say anything. Uh, yeah. just I, I didn't want to mess up your guys' back and forth. <laughs> That's okay. Rory, where are you right now? I'm, I'm at the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, airport in one of like the 45 gates owned by American Airlines. Actually, it's like 80 gates or it's like 90 gates. Whatever it is, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm just sitting in one of them and, and waiting to fly back to Portland after a week in Dallas at a Microsoft team meeting. What, uh, are, do you have, do you have a, um, how much time do you have before your flight takes off? Um, I'm going to have to board at about uh, 3.30, so I've got time. Yeah, all right. That's and 10 that, that's minutes. That's 3.30, uh, whatever time I'm in. So oh, one oh, hour okay. behind you. Can, you. can you guys do the arithmetic? Cause yeah, okay. I, I can't see a clock right now, and all I can right. do it anyway. So. so you got plenty of time. And also, Rory, before I forget, congratulations on your engagement. That's great news. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and, I'm very and, happy. I, I, I should congratulate you guys, too. This is the first show uh, I've been on. Um, since since leaving, and so it's the first show I've been on with a different company. And I just wanted to say, Richard, that uh, as of this point, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're one of the top three uh, co-hosts oh. who have ever <laughs> worked on Donnet Rocks. Although, yeah. although that said, you're a little bit of an amateur when it comes to uh, diseases and, and illnesses of the human body. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a, you know, a weaker player when it comes to the illnesses. Come on, Richard, yeah. the flu? The flu. The flu? Come on, buddy. Look, two weeks ago... <laughs> I, I was dizzy, I was throwing up, and just to top it all off, I was urinating blood. Okay, so oh, God. The flu. Come on, man, that's nothing. Last week when I was in Fiji uh, proposing to that wonderful little woman of mine, I, I had rashes all over my body. And, and and I don't know if I can say this on, on the air, but uh, I, I sunburned my penis. Um, what? And <laughs> I'm not even making that up. I don't know the top or the bottom? At the top, actually. I had a, I had a nice little red blister on, on the very end, and I had to lather it in cocoa cream every day. To, uh, you, you, you usually do that, though. Yeah, how is that different from your regular day, Rory? <laughs> Anyhow. All right. That's what I've been doing since I left the show. Wow. Well, congratulations again, and, and uh, you know, it's been, it's been rough without you, but we've, we're muddling through, and 
changing direction a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, it's different, but you know, things are things are working out all over, I guess. Well, very cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on mute. So you guys, uh, I'll look for opportune times to jump in and interrupt people. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, just uh, if you want me to come in and say something, just let me know, and and I'll I'll get rid of this background noise. Okay. So Scott, how have you been, buddy? Uh, I'm a little disturbed right now, having heard that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I came here and I was going to say things like, you know, blah, 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 C-sharp and blah, 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 weak reference and blah, 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 garbage collected. And then now I've, I've got this image in my mind of Rory and Fiji slathering himself. And I just, uh, <laughs> just want to talk about code, man. <laughs> Before we talk about code, and I do want to talk about code, there's lots to talk about, obviously. Uh, the Tech Ed videos, man. Awesome stuff. Well, how did that happen? I uh, I called Rory and I said, uh, uh, you know, be in a video, and he said no. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Roy, don't forget, I've got the negatives. <laughs> and he said, I'll be right over. <laughs> and uh, there you go. <laughs> so you guys, I mean, you guys are both in Portland. I, you must see each other more often than just to make videos, right? You do, you know. Dinners? Two, three times a year. Really? We, we see each other. No, I mean, I, I don't know. Roy is very small, so I, I've walked past him and not noticed him before, <laughs> so I don't... Uh, we, we, you know, we see each other when we see each other, you know? Except when you don't. When, when, I, when I, I have some, some protection money that he pays me, and I, I, know that's, I see him, you know, it's just an, an envelope drop, really. When Scott's having a tough coding problem at a Carillion, I usually, my phone starts ringing, but aside from that, we actually live on opposite ends of town. Okay. So I help him out occasionally. All right. So, uh, Scott, I got to know. So was this like, did somebody at Microsoft call you and say, we're looking to do some promo stuff? Or did you just have the idea, hey, I want to do a, a promo video? How did, I mean, what what happened? Is this a micro, an official Microsoft thing or what? what is it? You know, I mean, I'm an RD and Rory's uh, whatever Rory is. <laughs> and uh, I've been wondering that myself. So we always have a Microsoft person breathing down our neck. Right, but no, this was not like a Microsoft Studios thing. This was totally out of the, the the sick mind of Roy and I. And you know, some of them some of them hit, some of them miss. Uh, neither of us have lost our jobs yet. Yeah, but no, no one's pulling the strings. No one wrote the script but us. That's great. And that's We're just what screwing I like around. We'll probably it. do something else at TechEd if we can come up with it. That's what I like about it, though. It's so you know, guy with a camera and you know. Premiere in an hour, in a couple hours kind of thing. I think it actually was premiere. <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. And if you haven't seen it, you can find these videos. These are TechEd promo videos, uh, which you and Rory did. There's three of them now. Yeah, there's three, and I think we'll probably do another, or maybe one or two. And I, th- if you go to computerzen.com and look for the te- you know click on the TechEd category down on the left, right? Yeah, you can pretty uh, much find them right there. Work. Yeah, that's how I found them easily. Because you do a lot of posting on that blog. I mean, you know. Apparently, you, people are asking me when I sleep. Right. How many, uh, what, what kind of viewers do you, viewage do you get? Is that a word, viewage? V- viewage. Readership? Uh, how many people readership? read your blog? Uh, I, I, I don't refer to them as readers. I ref- it's usually spam. I, I, most of my traffic <laughs> is spam. <laughs> my, my mom has started reading my blog, which is a little special. That's disturbing. But a lot of people and, read your blog, though, right? What's that? How many people average will read a post? I get, as far as actual page views, n- minus refer spam, I maybe 10,000, 15,000 a day. Wow. Most of it's Google, though. Really? It's not people who care about me. It's anonymous strangers. And what about you, Rory? How many people hit neopolian.com? As far as uh, page views go, um, I'm actually about in the same neighborhood as Scott. Uh, individual users, according to my stats, I'm getting about nine to 10,000 a day. Um, I have no idea where they are, but um, I'm getting the same thing as Scott, though. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of Google stuff. I, I get about 500 uh, searches a week just for Nicole Ritchie, and yeah. I don't know where that's coming from. So I get most <laughs> of my Google referrals are for Nicole Ritchie and the word ass. <laughs> and uh, and those go those go straight to me, and I, I don't understand what the significance is. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting. So it, it, it's getting up there. It's a little weird, but yeah. Well, Scott, I got to ask you. You haven't been on the show since uh, ASP.NET 2.0 really was, uh, you know, announced and and its feature set. 
Uh, if you were, it's we we really covered very little of it. But you've been you've been working with this obviously. What uh, what what are your likes and dislikes? Hmm. The thing that I've always disliked about ASP.NET, regardless of the version, was that uh, you visit the page and some voodoo happens, and everything's great for months and months and months, but then. Uh, something goes wrong, and then you're deleting temp files from eight different places. Um, I see less of that kind of stuff in ASP.NET 2.0. It's much more transparent. Uh, there's less. It seems to me like there's less. There's less voodoo. Yeah. With 2.0. I haven't had any trouble with 2.0 freaking out, having to reset permissions on this and that, and remove temp folders from this and that. Um, I really like the. Even though we don't have edit and continue, we have mm-hmm. edit and refresh. Yeah. Everyone was complaining. Oh God, we don't have edit and continue. How would you edit and continue in a stateless yeah, environment know. like you know the web? Yeah, know. But you can <laughs> edit and then post back. Right. And, I, and that's that's pretty cool. It's almost like back in the day. I mean, we've come back to where we were in 1997, where we would make change to a page and hit refresh. You know, it took six seven years, but we picked up 150 widgets on the way, and we picked up garbage collection, and we picked up X. Oh, and XHTML by default is pretty hot. Well, one of the things that the the standards monkeys around here are really concerned about is making sure that we do XHTML and CSS. XHTML, of course, being HTML with a schema, HTML reformatted as XML. Uh, it's when you, when you hear people saying standards based, standards based, that's what they're what they're meaning. The problem is that ASP.NET 1.0 and 1.1 are physically incapable of producing valid XHTML. Uh, because XHTML is something that really uh, happened a little bit after 1.0 was released, and it was too late. What what is that? I don't even know what XHTML is. Well, if you have like a break tag, like an open open less than br close less than. Oh yeah, that that's an open tag. It never ends. Right. It never it never gets closed. Right. Um, one of the, let me put it this way. One of the reasons that uh, things suck so badly on the net between multiple browsers is that. Everyone, because HTML is lazy. Yeah. HTML, yeah, you put in B tags, you put in, you know, you forget to do a TR or a TD, right. the browser will figure out what the table is supposed to look like. Right. But with, uh, so, so the different browsers dealt with that laziness in different ways. And that's why you have all the incompatibilities. Right. Yeah. Remember back in the day, you know, you, you could create a page that would show up on IE because IE was really mellow. Right. It wouldn't fit, it just would not show up on Netscape, it would go blank. Sure. I did many of those. Yeah. So now a lot of these different things back and forth between IE and uh, and Firefox are just incomplete or poorly uh, interpreted standards compliance issues. Um, and XHTML is the HTML vocabulary formulated as XML. So oh. that XHTML is okay. well formed. You can use an XML editor. Got it. Now oh. remember that the very very first tenant of of XML is well formed, right? Right. There's three four kinds of XML. There's well formed, valid, and crap. <laughs> <laughs> if if it if it doesn't have a closing tag, it's crap. People will say, no, no, that's malformed XML. Well it doesn't it's not malformed, it's it's not XML. It looks like XML. It might have the potential to one day be XML. Yeah. But it might as well be, you know, a CSV file. It, it's not gonna load into the DOM. Yeah, parses just as well as a as a file out of, a text file out of Notepad, so it's crap. It's crap. So most HTML and most websites are crap. Um, but once things become XHTML, uh, you can start putting in semantics from other namespaces. You can mark up your XHTML because it is just XML. You can transform from XML into XHTML. You can use all your existing tools. You can make sure that you're you are compliant by doing actual Got schema it. validation on your XHTML. Point being that you can push a button in ASP.NET and you get XHTML by default. Yeah. So something that was physically impossible to do without writing your own page class in ASP.NET 1.1 is now standard and, em- and embraced, and, and that's going to be pretty sweet. Let me just ask you a real quick question for my benefit, and I'm sorry if I'm taking up time with stupid questions, but... I've been there are no di- stupid I, questions, only inquisitive idiots. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I like that. The uh, XHTML, uh, now I've been doing well-formed HTML, you know, with, with P and slash P for a long time. 
Okay. Just that doesn't make it XHTML, right? You have to have an XML header and a schema tag. Is that the? Oh, oh yeah, you have to have a namespace. Yeah. You have to have. Uh, uh, it needs to be it needs to validate as XHTML. Your Got stuff it. may validate as probably HTML transitional. Okay. Which is the HTML 4.0? There's a DTD that backs it up. But yeah. let me ask you this: Do your pages have a doc type header? Yeah. No. Not. Not. Yeah, so not, they're, they're they're just text files. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, and that was. A long time ago that I've been that I was writing HTML by hand, but so yeah. really, I'm I'm all about TRTD, man. That's all. I, that's my only skill, actually. I'm a tweaker, and especially with tables, I hate the table design. Any kind of WYSIWYG table editor is crap. You know, man. Let me tell you, the you know ASP.NET 2.0 table designer is pretty is hot. It, you know what the problem I have with all these table designers is? Is that like move the cursor up in the upper left-hand corner and just move it around by one pixel, and you get a different icon for every pixel you move around. Because there's so mm. many different ways to select stuff, you know, column, row, the whole table, the one cell. There's so many ways to select in a table that if you don't blow it up somehow and get some better ways to, to, to latch on to things, it's very difficult. I find it really infuriating to use that way. So I'm all about tweaking. But, uh, you know, I don't start out with a blank text pad and you know, that, might, that might be our way of, of hinting that we don't want you to actually be using tables so much as we want you to be using div tags and CSS and, and positioning things uh, without uh, busting out with the tables too much. Although I do agree with you that it is a bit of a pain in the ass, although um, I wish we wouldn't say that so much as I am now a stockholder. Right. And, uh, well, you guys, you know what tables are for, right? Sure, yeah, for positioning. No, they're mm. for freaking tables. Okay. <laughs> I, I use them for positioning. You know, I use for layout. Do you have a table of, of stuff? Go to, go to cssgarden.com. Okay. cssgarden.com is a single page formulated as XHTML, mm-hmm. and a designer created it. It's got a series of divs, a series of tags. It's very small. It's maybe two or three pages of, like, page down, page down. That's it. Yeah. And he said, I want to see what you designers can do with this page without touching the source. Huh. You can only do this with CSS. Huh. And he has a forward and back where you can walk through literally hundreds of different um, reimaginings of this page using wow. CSS. Yeah, I got to admit. Without changing anything. I got to admit, that's not my area of specialty. So. Wow. See, and this, this is, is fabulous. fabulous. This is the point. You have to hire a designer. Yeah. Avalon's going to make it worse. Okay? Elvis, Einstein, and Mort, the three kinds of developers, none of them are good at UI design. Hire a developer, get right. a UI designer, have a, you know, hire a uh, usability studies company. But for God's sake, stop slapping big buttons and, you know, and uh, green lights and red lights and icons that you find in the right. you know, Explorer somewhere. I, I wanted to pitch in and, and say that I totally agree with Scott, and that's one thing that I talk about uh, to my audiences. I say that, you know, I'll go through a particular demo and I'll show them something, even in wind forms, depending on what you're going to be doing, I always, always suggest that you hire a designer, but especially if you're going to be doing a website. And nowadays, you can get Canadians, you know, like Richard, to do this stuff for like 400 <laughs> bucks a pop. You know, they'll give you your whole look and feel up and down. You just outsource it to Canada, offshore it to Canada, um, and, uh, and they'll ship something back, and it's all in the Canadian dollar, and it's really cheap, and... And they do a fine job. I mean, just because they're up there doesn't mean they're, like, worse artists or something like that. You know, they, they, they do a great job. And <laughs> I totally agree with Rory. The great thing about Canada is that every time I hear that the Canadian dollar has fallen, everything in Canada goes on sale 10%. <laughs> <laughs> See, when I was doing all my work in the U.S., every time the Canadian dollar went down, it was like I got a raise. <laughs> all right, I like this. Uh, I'm at uh, CSS Zen Garden, and I'm... Click on the links on the right, and, and you're right. I mean, it, it's, I'm blown away. It's amazing. Number 156 is fantastic. It's called Table Layout Assassin. These are things you could not conceive of be, being possible, but this is the power of CSS. Yeah. At, at Carillion, we've really embraced this, and we do all of our layout with CSS, and we have, uh, have a, a, a theming and skinning engine. Hmm. I figured you said you embrace this. All your pages have ninjas on them. We all have ninjas, yeah. Uh, a lot of zip lining going on here. Uh, a lot of sneaking around. Uh, there's a there's a there's a breakable um, uh, stained glass window. I like to zip line through, and then I put it back together. Nice. Hey Scott. So, 
Um, I know that I'm not like a co-host or anything anymore, but I still have a question. I figured you'd be a good guy to talk about it. You want to talk about why it's a good idea to go with CSS and div tags rather than, you know, doing it the old school way where you've got all your font tags and all your mock up well, I mean, yeah, I mean look, just, just look at DOS blog. I mean, we ship, uh, what do we ship now, five, six, seven different themes? I just changed. I mean, the, the the six people who read my blog have noticed that um, I changed my look and feel. Right. I literally shipped off three CSS files and a template to a Canadian, PayPal'd <laughs> him in Canadian dollars, and he came back with a really nice layout. Huh. I didn't change a single markup tag. Wow. That's that's powerful. I mean, that's it's the idea between uh, expressing what something is like. Here is my page. It has a button on it. Right. versus the how it's going to present itself, sure. whether the button is blue or green. Maybe it's not even presented as a button. It's, it's, it's about, you know how people say, I have, like a, I have a three-tier design, yeah. or I have a three-layer design or whatever, but it's always on like one machine, and ASP.NET talks to SQL. So I don't know where that third layer is. There are a lot more potentials for abstraction, even within layers. Your user interface can be chopped up into CSS, HTML, you know, val- JavaScript validation, like using like maybe stuff like Peter Blum's, um, and then having a business layer. Those are all like le- logical layers within one physical tier, the web tier. Yes, you know, speaking of Peter Bloom's stuff and controls, third-party controls, all the ASP.NET controls totally support cascading style sheets. All the styles come from the CSS stuff, right? Totally. So all you- of our, like for example, we're doing a lot of um, server-side controls because we do banking. Uh, a data grid isn't isn't appropriate for what I need. I have a balance list control, so I drop it on a page, and then I've got a here's a list of all of your account balances. We expose every aspect of that control with a CSS class, which means that if uh, it, actually to answer Rory's question, if if a boss says, "Oh, that's great," except make that column right aligned, that can either be a change control that'll take six days and a hundred thousand dollars to recode yeah. and recompile, or it's a quick tweak to CSS. Yeah. Well, um, right now we're going to pause a little bit and actually hear from our friend uh, Peter Bloom and and hear about him. I'm going to talk about him for a second, but you've used his stuff before, haven't you? In fact, you're the guy who introduced me to Peter. Yeah, totally. Peter, um, we standardized on his validation controls here because the ASP.NET 1.0 validations are are egregiously lame. He's built a a, a dynamic JavaScript engine for doing both client and server-side validation of widgets, and we use it in all of our sites here at uh, at Carillion. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do in ASP.NET 2.0. And actually, another thing that I noticed that he just put up uh, a little while back in the same vein is he's got uh, a, a, a visual visual input security tool right. that watches for, like, SQL injection and stuff. Yeah. So anything that involves me not working, uh, I, I, I'm behind. So let me tell you about Peter Bloom. He's the author of several very popular ASP.NET control suites, and uh, we've had him on the show twice to talk about them. His customers have thrown their accolades at him through numerous testimonials on the ASP.NET Control Gallery and two Reader's Choice Awards in ASP.NET Pro Magazine. What I really like about Peter's work is how feature-rich his stuff is, you know? For example, his replacement to the ASP.NET Calendar Control has well over 100 properties. In a, uh, in a recent review in ASP.NET Pro Magazine, Don Kiley said this about his documentation, and I quote, The documentation is so detailed and complete, it's almost scary. There's no way I'm ever going to show any of my clients the docs, because that will raise the bar way too high for my own documentation. End quote. So what are these controls that everyone is talking about? Well, there are four. Peter's date package, professional validation and more, visual input security, and Peter's polling package. Peter's date package is a suite of 19 date and time controls including the calendar I mentioned. If you're trying to create your own date picker with a pop-up calendar, you're wasting your time when there's something like this good for 50 bucks. Professional validation and more resolves many of the issues users face with Microsoft validators and greatly expands your validation tools. Its 22 validators provide client-side support for Firefox and Opera, as well as IE, of course. They handle most validation rules without you writing custom code. Plus, they make it much easier to communicate errors with the user. Professional validation and more is really a suite of controls designed around data entry. It enhances all phases of data collection, from setting up the page to submitting it. 
It includes greatly enhanced text boxes and adds multi-browser compatible JavaScript into your web forms to make your pages much more interactive. Version 3.0 is coming out next week, giving you a suite of over 40 controls. I found this testimonial on the ASP.NET control gallery. Quote, Professional validation and more is probably the most useful suite of controls that you would ever have for ASP.NET. It makes working with complex forms that require a lot of logic nothing short of a breeze. I can't imagine the amount of thought and time that Peter's put into this package because it does everything. Just try out the package and you'll wonder how you ever got along with using the built-in validation. Visual Input Security is the only product I know of that addresses how hackers use SQL injection and cross-site scripting to damage your site and steal your data, like Scott was talking about. It's very thorough, with validators, logging, and other technology to frustrate the hacker. Don Kiley's review gave it five stars and said, quote, I highly recommend visual input security for all web developers who are serious about building secure sites. Peter's polling package is the most popular ASP.NET polling control. Like all the other products, it's very feature-rich with a web-based poll data entry and reporting system. I strongly encourage you to visit www.peterbloom.com, that's P-E-T-E-R-B-L-U-M.com, and take these great products for a spin around the web. Really good stuff. And cheap, too. It's like 50 bucks a piece or something like that, aren't they? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. I am staggered by the CSS Zen Garden. Like, you got to send anybody who needs to get a page developed here and say, like, if you're not thinking in these terms, in this caliber, what are you doing? Yeah, Scott. You're still looking at that. It goes on and on, doesn't it? It just goes on and on, and everyone is more beautiful than next. Like, it is And they do a view sort. It's It's the same XML. It's the same XML every time. Yep, it's, it's fabulous. That is pretty yep. awesome. Then again, how many, how many, how many uh, different styles are you going to make for your website? You know, well, oh. it depends. If you've got, let's say that you're a bank and you do a credit card, how many different credit cards do you think Bank One has, or how many credit credit cards does you know Wamu have? If you've got a blog, uh, how many different faces, how many different categories do you have? If you if you want to give someone a choice, I mean, you're starting to see basic basic theming on different sites. I think Fox News and some ABC News have got a button on the right hand side that lets you change the size of the font. Yeah, that's the first kind of public recognition that maybe people don't want your little eight point font. <laughs> that's done with by switching out CSS. Yeah, that's just the start. Uh, there's been times where I think MSN MSN uh, Spaces lets you have five or six different themes. You know, why, RSS. Readers give you the opportunity to look at stuff with its own skin. You know, why should I be forced to look at a bad design when there's an optional, right. an optional design? Well, the salient point is, if you don't do this, you know how many designs you're going to have. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It'll right. be a new well, one every time. It's <laughs> also one of those things where even if you aren't planning on having any other designs whatsoever, I mean, your marketing department's going to come to you at some point and say that they want some major overhaul because they've gotten bored with the current design and they think that customers don't care about it anymore because they think that customers are only concerned with that one website. Mm. That they're all sitting up at night biting their nails waiting for a new set of graphics to come in. That's true. You know, and it's going to be a lot easier to make that change uh, if you don't have to go through and completely redesign the site from the ground up. And it's also one of those situations where I used to do work for a company that uh, we were literally writing the same application, you know, over and over again. Uh, and then the only thing that really changed was the UI. Right, ah. so if we were actually trying to change everything in the markup, that would have been a major pain in the ass. And that is actually how some of the older projects that were being done, and it was a major pain in the ass. So you want to avoid that, you know, if you, if you can. Hey, Rory, I think they're paging you, man. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're, they're not. It's, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm hiding in a corner. Hey, dude, I dare you to go into a bathroom and talk in a stall right now. Um, well... <laughs> okay, I'll put it on mute until I'm in the bathroom, okay? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you knew he had no choice he, once you said that. He has no, the, the gauntlet has been thrown down. So, Scott, while he's uh, going into the stall of the nearest men's room, uh, tell me about this uh, a, a cool post that has generated some interest on your blog recently. Because I, I read everything that you post, and, and it's always interesting. 
You know, I, I, before I say that, I got to say, man, no one ever comments on anything on my freaking blog. But I go to your blog, and people go on for days, like it's a chat room of some kind. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Your, your blog is blissfully devoid of content, and people go on and on and on and build this community and this this whole sense. And people, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll like work for days on a post <laughs> explaining how to do some obscure thing, like you know, auto sizing columns and wind forms, and I'll get like maybe Richard will come and say, "Good job." <laughs> well, yeah, but my usual reaction to some of those mega posts of yours is, wow, I, I, I don't know where to go after that, Scott. You've nailed it down. <laughs> You've thought about this more than I have in my entire life. What am I going to say now? I think you've got hundreds of people out there who, are, you know, they see your greatness and are just too intimidated to oh, even greatness. comment. That's... But, you know, they come to my lousy blog and, hey, you know, they can show me a few <laughs> things, so... You know, they're more prone because I'm an idiot, you know, and I'm just I'm just blathering, basically. <laughs> Talking about .NET rock schedules and trips to Florida, you know, what's the harm in commenting there? there there's yeah, no man, chance they're going to look dumb. Yeah, I see one more picture dumb. of your cat, I swear. <laughs> I, no, no, I don't. I'm Carl Franklin. Here's my cat. I don't Woo-hoo. post pictures of my cat. That must be a different Carl Franklin. It must be. Um, <laughs> I don't even have pictures of my cat. Okay? I'm joking. It's a, it's a It's a blog archetype. Yeah. Come on, Richard, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead. What's, so uh, I, I posted uh, back in um, February 21st, if you go to the blog and search for interview, I posted a list, what I called it, uh, What Great Dot Net Developers Ought to Know. Um, I, was dry, I was coming back from the ISV community days that I spoke at in Boise, and I had about a 45-minute little putter, puddle jumper flight. Oh, my God. So I just, what? I'm just looking at the laundry list of bullets here. It's enormous. See how he says he reads everything in my blog and then right, goes back guys, a month like, I've never seen this before. I haven't seen this. I'm sorry. So I wrote a list of things you need to know. Uh, hey, Carl, anyway. you dumb bastard. You there? Yeah. <laughs> are, are you in the toilet? Uh, yeah, I made it. I had to go into one of the handicap stalls because oh. I have all my bags and there was no room for anything else. It's actually a lot quieter in here. Okay. The, the, the acoustics are, there, are fantastic. Are there people <laughs> in there right now? Yeah, I'm in here right now. The, the only problem is that although I can hear you guys better, it's a little bit humid. Are there other people in the bathroom right now? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, what do you think? It's an empty bathroom? How about a little teapot, man? Oh, my God. I, I, well, I'm not gonna, what is this, I, Howard Stern? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's getting, a little, uh, that's getting a little weird there. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this ties in nicely with the, uh, with the video, um, <laughs> sort of, which probably confuses anybody who's only listening to one end of this conversation. And the four <laughs> people who watch the video. <laughs> yeah, right. That's interesting. You're one of these people who divides everything by a thousand, Scott. <laughs> um, you're, no, you're really, there's four people who watch the video. <laughs> At least, well, that's a good point. There are. You didn't I, say I met them. about there not being 4,000. I, I met them. They were, they, were, they were at Subway. There was a group of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, so is this actually better? Can you guys hear me better in here? Yeah, no. actually. Actually. <laughs> just, just stop uh, just flushing to, the toilet. Yeah, just to prove that you're in there, let's hear the flush. Oh, um, my God. Okay, let me see here. Well, it's one of those infrared things. I'm trying to, I'm trying to trick it. See, oh, oh no, it has a button. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is low. Rory's too thin to convince the machine to flush. <laughs> I liked, by the way, Scott, when you actually had to flush Rory's urinal in the first video. That was well. Really... He, you can hear right now. He just flushed with his foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, how do you hit that little button with your foot, Rory? Yeah, I, did, I didn't. I didn't use a little button. I put my hand in front of that little thing that looks like Hal's eyeball, and yeah. uh, and uh, <laughs> I just held it there for a minute, and then I took it away. Okay. I did see the button, but I have no intention of touching the button because I'm not actually going to talk about it right now because it's even a little bit too gross for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get on to this post about what great .NET developers ought to know. Is that, is that the topic, or what are we talking about? Well, no, no, it's, first, it's first we caught uh, Carl in a blatant lie where he said he read my blog, and then I showed him a post he'd never seen. Oh, and okay. then <laughs> I, I was just telling him about the, how I was coming back from that Boise ISV thing, and I wrote that quick list of, of interview questions. And yeah. and people like hate that list. It goes. That's like the only thing I've ever got comments on. I've got forty eight comments, and a lot. I love some, and they're all angry. Oh, they're all like, "Yeah, this is trivia, man. I don't want to buy hey, a trivia guy. You know, I'll look that up." Uh, uh, wait, wait, which which list you know, was it? What's that? What list was that? This is the interview questions. Because I, I can't remember that, and I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I I mean, it, it did get a little bit trivial at times, but it was still a nice service. It, I mean, it was like, here's a question. And then I'm getting, I'm getting things from, like, people in Djibouti who want to know what the answers are. 
the very kind, very well-meaning people, you know, hello, my name is Fred, I live in Djibouti, and I need the answers to your questions well, let's for read a final. A few. Let's read a few of these. Everyone who writes code should know, uh, should be able to describe the difference between a thread and a process. What is a Windows service, and how does its life cycle differ from a standard EXE? What's the difference between an EXE and a DLL? That's basic stuff, right? Yeah. And then you get into... 101 type stuff. And then you get into mid-level .NET developer. Right. What is reflection? So uh, can date times be null? Those are some of the shorter ones. There's about 20 of those, it looks like, maybe 15. Senior developer architects, what does, the, what does this do? SN-T foo.dll, right? Right. Good stuff. The, the what question is a, being that not that you know the trivia, but if you're, you know, if you're really architecting large, complicated systems, right. you will have typed that once yep. in your life. What is boxing? You know, those kinds of things. Right. Yeah, so it goes on for, you know, C-sharp developers, ASP.NET UI developers. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, not obviously, but interestingly, VB.NET uh, developers is missing from there. Yeah, what yeah. is up with that? What's the nearest package store? Uh, you know, how many ounces in a in a bag of uh, in a ten dollar bag? Uh, I don't know of, you of know. Doritos. Yeah. Well, if you notice that there's only ten questions that are C sharp specific. Yeah. But the vast vast majority of that stuff is totally agnostic. Right. Uh, and and I am very much someone who is agnostic. I mean, I I cut my teeth on VB three. I'm just giving you hell. So, you know, that if you like semicolons, point. that's, you know, I I <laughs> believe you should be able to marry whoever you want to marry. <laughs> obvious target there. <laughs> He's not going to let you go, Carl. Good stuff. You know, you know and, and, you know, I, I would be really providing a disservice to the listeners if I didn't bring up your all-time best uh, post, which is on how to give an effective presentation. Tips on giving a great presentation. Because, and you know why? Is because I, you know, I've seen this stuff and I've absorbed it so much, and so many people know about it. And then, uh, you know, I heard from somebody at Dev Connections that they couldn't read the screen. You know, for somebody's presentation, they didn't. I didn't know who it was, but some presenter at Dev Connections didn't read this and didn't have their their font bumped up or whatever. Oh yeah, I'm taking full credit for all large font presentations from now on. I've already decided that. And Lucida console, I'm going to behind it 100%. Yeah. That's right, baby. Yep. But, uh, yeah, this is good stuff. Not for everybody, but, you know, for anybody who's a presenter. If you're going to present, you have no excuse not to do all of these things. Yes. It's not that difficult. This is what the job entails. Folks, do yourself a favor and check out our friends Data Dynamics website, datadynamics.com, makers of ActiveReports.net. Simple, powerful, and cost-effective reporting for uh, Windows Forms and ASP.NET. Very nice stuff. You can pile the uh, the reports right into your application, ship them with your assemblies. Uh, has all the great features you come to expect in a reporting engine, and you can use uh, ActiveX controls right in the reports too. So, great stuff. Uh, Data Dynamics has been an excellent sponsor of .NET Rocks uh, for a long time. They, uh, you know, they deserve a little bit of uh, your love and attention. So, go check them out at www.datadynamics.com. Rory, how you doing in there? I actually, I got out of the bathroom because it was too humid, and I was getting this, you know, thin patina of other people's uh, urine on my body. <laughs> the stall uh, that I had to go in, because I had all my bags and I had to go into one of those big stalls, was obviously one, 
into which somebody who had eaten a lot of like those Olestra chips oh, had gone come running. On. And <laughs> I just I didn't I didn't want to actually stay around there any longer than I had to. So I felt like we we had our fun and uh, we did some toilet flushing, and then I had to get the hell out. So I'm just <laughs> sitting in I'm now an American Airlines MD83 out the window that's sitting in being prepped for flight. That's what I'm doing now. You know, where else on the blogosphere, where on the Internet can you bracket such things as, what is, you know, how does the garbage collector work with just cheap potty humor? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere. This is the service we provide you. This is the commitment to customer service that uh, is provided by .NET. .NET rocks. The, the .NET part meaning .NET, the rocks meaning uh, whatever you just ate. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, you know what I can say that is not body humor, and that actually is exciting and is totally related to ASP.NET 2.0. I mean, does anybody want to hear it, or yeah, would that be one topic? Uh, let's just ahead. let's just make fart noises. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's okay. Here's the deal. Here's what I'm really excited about, and I've been wanting to tell people this. And you guys are the first people that I can tell. I was going to blog about it, but I'm not home yet. So I just found out yesterday um, that I mean, you guys know. I don't know if anybody else knows. I'm on the MSDN events team. Uh, at Microsoft, which is a team that goes around and gives technical seminars to developers, msdnevents.com. And the the content that we're doing, not for this upcoming quarter here, but I think for the one after it, uh, where actually we've brought in Pluralsight, and specifically Fritz Onion as consultants, and they're working with us to put together our content. And that just has me, like my little geek, you know, heart going a bitter patter because Fritz Onion, I mean, he wrote the absolute best book on ASP.NET in existence, essentially ASP.NET for those of you who haven't. I uh, actually read it or, or heard of it, Great and book. I'm so thrilled that he's going to be the guy uh, who's going to be our main resource for putting these presentations together. Awesome. That's going to be awesome. Cool. And I just had to do, I had to do a little bit of like advertising slash bragging about that because that's just that's way too cool for me. I I adore that man. He's uh, uh, his book cool. is the textbook for the ASP.NET masterclass that I teach. Great oh, stuff. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. And you remember that? You remember when we interviewed him? He yeah. wrote that book by hand. Yeah, like, I know. With a pen and paper. I remember. You know? That guy's something. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to say that, and it's actually kind of even on topic and involves no mention of uh, the digestive process or, or <laughs> mishap. So. I, I'm so confused now. I can barely understand you there, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. It's all going to be HPNet 2.0 stuff, and that's going to be free. So I'm just happy as a little clam in a bit of nice seabed somewhere or some other analogy that works better than that. Insert your own there. So that's good. Scott, aren't you working on a book as well? Uh, it'll never be oh, as good God. as Fritz's book, though. Well, that, that goes without saying, but I'm just, you know, trying to give you a plug. Well, yeah. When, when, when Rory said that that, that, uh, that that Fritz's book actually replaces the New Testament, uh, <laughs> my little book on ASP.net will likely uh, be, uh, I don't know, smaller. <laughs> and I didn't write it with I didn't write it on a big yellow pad uh, with a pen. I wrote it with Dragon Naturally Speaking. So. <laughs> Mine is the, the anti onion book, basically. Well, uh, Try to get my little piece of the pie. You just posted shrinkster.com slash four J four, which is I don't know where this where this fits into the conversation, but this is a really cool thing. Uh the Senqua Peron chair <laughs> for XP, extreme programming. Yeah, it's, it's like an, an Aeron, only with more Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. It's a it's a twin chair, Aaron chair <laughs> for extreme programming. <laughs> Great Maybe stuff. it's not translating over radio. Uh, you just got to go there. Four J. Got to go to the link. That's something Richard would do. Um, so let's get let's get back to cascading style sheets because you know we do have to talk about some .dot net stuff on a .dot net rock show, um, and and this is really intriguing to me because. As you realized and, and figured out, I've always been a do it with tables and pixel dot gif kind of guy, and never really got into cascading style sheets. So, how does I mean there is a cascading style sheet editor in Visual Studio one point one, you know, or two thousand three dot net one point one, uh, and I noticed some weirdness with that thing that when you drag a cascading style sheet over onto your page, which you have to do, or you put a link tag in there. That it, it every time you do that, it adds another link tag in the meta section, and so like if you drag drag it once and poof, you've got your cascading style sheet applied. Drag it again, and now you go into the HTML view in the ASPX file, and now there's two that, links in there. 
that's actually not that weird because that's one of the whole ideas behind cascading style sheets. You can have multiple uh, style sheets overriding uh, settings and okay. uh, and defining other settings as well. And you can have oh. like an aggregate uh, uh, collection of, of settings specified in several CSS files. Okay. Or, or I mean, that's that's where we get into the whole cascading thing. I, oh, I don't okay. think I'm going to. Scott, do you have like a more eloquent eloquent way of of saying this? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes more sense now. Thanks, Rory. Yeah, that's that, that, it, that's not a bug. That's actually how it's supposed to be. It's a little weird that it would let you drag the same file yeah. over and over again, but multiple files, that's actually the way it should be. So. And uh, the, the the style sheets in this com- cssgarden.com are, you know, include lots of glorious graphics and great stuff like that. It, cascading style sheets allow you to change graphics as well as font sizes and Right, if you like if you have like a div or like an like say you take like a header like H1 like on my blog I've got yeah. a logo. The logo doesn't appear in the source, it appears on the H1 as a background image. So you can oh. take any element and say this has an image associated with it. Okay. So yeah, images don't have to be in, in an image source tag. Like you wow. could you could take like a UL like an, an unordered list Right. HTML tag, UL, LI, LI, yeah, yeah. UL for under list, LI for list item, yep. and put bullets on them using CSS. Huh. You know, the real question that you alluded to there, Carl, is I have to wonder what tools... Right, what are the, the tools that you use? ...graphic designers use to make these unbelievable style sheets. I mean, there's really some talent here, and they and I don't imagine they were using visual notepad when they wrote them. Like, I know Dax uses Corel Photo Paint, you know? Uh, and does markups in in that, and then uh, I guess he's using I don't know what he's using in terms of uh, style sheets or whatever. But uh, what do you do? What Scott, do you do a lot of CSS stuff yourself? Uh, do you, no, do you man. have tools that you uh, use? You, you know, if you're not good at something, to hire someone else. Right. Uh, Herbal Canadian. I can't be a decent programmer and a designer at the same time. Yeah, and that's that's where you know that's where my where my HTML talents. Uh, and as well, you know. Do you hire someone to do Franklin's.net? Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about him, uh, Dax Pandy from Uh He did the, uh, the, the .NET Rocks. He's doing a Franklin's Net update, uh, pop.com, thedailycommute.com. Uh, .NET Rocks.com is pretty nice. Yeah. Franklin's.net looks like you did it. Yeah, Franklin's Net is like three or four years old. I, I did yeah. it myself. Yeah, and that's that's getting an update too. That's cool. Yep. So the the rule is so now if you're doing if you're doing a website in ASP.NET using cascading style sheets, your uh your output is pretty raw, isn't it? I mean, you know, our output is basically like div left side, div right side, div uh you know body. That's and, and we're actually using master pages, the the, the ASP.NET 1.1 implementation right. of master pages. So we don't even have a form or uh, a, you know, H, we don't have anything on our pages but the little chunk of content. Hey, there's been a lot of talk on the regional directory list lately about AJAX. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And this is what Google is using for Google Maps, right? This is what Outlook Web Access used 10 years ago. Okay. Right. Isn't it just XML HTTP? Isn't that what it is? Yep, that's XML the XML HTTP was an IE-specific thing. It's the same sort of deal, though, right? It's the same idea? It is Basically. using JavaScript to make web requests and parse the yeah. result. Yeah. It so, just has a name now. So what do you think of this? I mean, you're an ASP.NET guy. You're not necessarily uh, beating the smart client drum, which is obviously where this thing is uh, well, targeting. Well, I, I, talk, I talk to the general public, though. You know, grandma can't download a smart client because grandma can't figure out how to install the .NET framework because the .NET framework's not on Windows Update. Yeah. Okay. You know, so, but, you know, next Thanksgiving, I'll install the .NET framework on grandma's machine, and maybe then smart clients will take off. So I take it you're you're totally into this Ajax stuff. If it if I can, I, I'd rather do it in Flash, frankly. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> sure. Because I, I can tell you, Flash is on your machine. Yeah. I know Grandma has got Flash in her machine. Flash is a ninety-seven percent market penetration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do it in Flash before I do it in Java. Yeah, I do it in AJAX before I do it in Smart Client. Now, Smart Clients are fantastic if you control the machines. If you're going to do like a That's what an intranet, or you're going to do a customer service application. 
But unless you can guarantee that the .NET framework on everyone's machine is not going to happen, I believe smart clients will happen when Longhorn ships. Hmm. Until then, Ajax is great. Problem with Ajax, though, is that it's voodoo. Right. I mean, I still don't know how Outlook Web Access knows how to tell me that there's new mail. It is spooky. It's it is spooky. A little blue toast popping out of my web browser. <laughs> You people, stop that. Stop that right now. <laughs> Don't do stuff in the web that shouldn't be happening. Right. You know, the Outlook Web Access is the bane of an endless number of, of application developers. How come our app isn't as nice as Outlook Web Access? Right. You finally put a really a- incredible web application in front of non-web people, you know, in front of regular mortals that sign checks, and you've ruined all these developers' lives. <laughs> oh man well we're just coming down to uh the last few minutes of the show here and i want to ask both of you guys the question that i ask uh everyone these days which is what is the coolest thing you've downloaded lately my own video <laughs> <laughs> and admittedly a very cool thing yeah now that Scott's done, do you want me to hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the coolest thing I downloaded actually has to do with uh, Jeff Maciolik, to some extent. Um, about a year ago, he pointed out this application to me called DOSBox, which is a DOS simulator. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have run this, but I suddenly got this hankering to run uh, not just the old adventure games that I used to play when I was a kid, but I wanted to get them in French. And, <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and they don't run under Windows, so I had to go out and I had to grab DOSBox, and then I grabbed another application. If you don't want to sit around and configure DOSBox, which is this sort of convoluted open source project, you can go and download this thing called Defend, D-F-E-N-D, and it's a, it's a graphical front end to DOSBox, and it makes it really easy to configure uh, old applications and games that will only run under DOS and, and run them from this menu uh, style configuration. But even from that, you know, I'm getting kind of bored of these games in French, and I'm moving on to... Uh, I, I went to an abandoned website and I found a copy of Windows version one. You know the old uh, the old text based version of Windows, and yeah. uh, and I'm going to grab that and get that installed when I get back to Portland. Just out of curiosity, I just want to see that thing running. You know, just just for not even historical reasons, just because I'm so curious about what those days must have been like. So, got to play the original version of Solitaire. And C- <laughs> yeah, I guess you could. And CPM. So, so that thing's actually really cool, just because there's so many DOS apps that will absolutely not run under Windows. I mean, there's Windows 95 and 98 apps that won't run under XP, so you have to you have to do something. And uh, and the something I'm doing is I'm I'm running these old apps under under DOSBox. So that's the coolest thing I've done lately, along with Keyfen. And Scott, are you sticking with your uh, video as the coolest thing? There isn't anything really cool that you've downloaded other than. Well, I just downloaded DOSBox <laughs> <laughs> because Rory said it was cool. Scott, I'm gonna I'm almost back. To, I'm coming back to Portland. I'm gonna kick your ass. No, seriously, I just downloaded it. I'm going to get Alone in the Dark running, which is a fantastic game from 1991. Wait, are you serious? You're actually going to get Alone in the Dark? I literally just got DOSBox running, and now I'm going to download Alone in the Dark. Uh, Do you know the old game that I have have a weakness for is Transport Tycoon? Yeah, you can get that, too. They've got all that stuff. Hey, Rory, if you're into into French adventure games, you should look into a game called Relentless that was one of the few um, games that was actually developed in France that I think ever made any sort of impact. And Wait it a was, minute, why do, why do I know about that game? Could you describe it? Because I think I've seen it. Uh, Relentless. You play a guy in a blue robe who dribbles a ball around. It's an isometric view. It's Gurad shaded. So, you know, everything is sort of colorful spheres and oblong Marble things. Marble Madness? Not quite Marble <laughs> Madness. Wow, Jeff. I'm sorry. I said that I thought that I'd heard of that game and played it, but I realized I haven't, and probably nobody else has. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the French, the French. But I'll, I'll take a look. Relentless. Blue guy in a robe with a basketball, right? That's what you said? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> dribbling what? Is he, is he drooling or dribbling? I couldn't. The connection's back here. A little both. A little both. <laughs> well, I'll find it. Okay. All right, guys. Is there any last-minute words of uh, wisdom you want to impart on the listening public? Scott? I just, when Rory proposed to me that day in Fiji, it was just the most beautiful day of my life. <laughs> Rory? Well, what I'll say, if Scott doesn't want to share any of his wisdom, um, uh, uh, mine is go ahead and check out msdnevents.com and come to one of my events, and uh, I'll give you some free crap and, uh, and do awesome. some demos for you. All right, well, guys, it's been a pleasure having you yet again on another show, and uh, keep making those videos. I can't wait to see the next one. 
From on behalf of myself, Jeff Maciolik, and the sound of Richard Campbell in Vancouver, this is Carl Franklin saying have a great week and rock on and check out those videos. Have a good one. Time for it.